Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we are talking about PC UI. PC, starting from the words play canvas, UI meaning user interface. And I gotta admit, as a, a tech person and a geek, I have a weakness for two things. One is bullet points, I don't know why, and the other one is UI frameworks. So this one kind of really kind of gets into my wheelhouse because it's a UI framework that is actually used to make the UI for an online game engine. So uh, PC uh, UI is what we were checking out today, and we were checking it out today because PC UI 2.0 was just released. Now I'm going to assume that a lot of you have probably never heard of this, uh, so I'm not going to focus too much on what is actually new in this release. Instead, we're going to go over a bit of an overview of what PC UI is all about. And it is straightforward. It is a user interface library. It came from the world of Play Canvas. It is an entirely um, open source and uh, quite well documented. So if you want to come on in here and get started with it, uh, it is super, super simple. I'll show you that from the very beginning. Uh, it provides all the common UI tools that you would expect. As I mentioned earlier on, it is well documented. You can use this TypeScript, JavaScript. You could also probably use it with Dart and so on. Um, you can, the uh, game engine behind the scenes or the game engine that inspired this one is Play Canvas. I've always been a fan of Play Canvas. If you want to do 3D web development in the browser, it's hard to beat uh, Play Canvas on the whole. It's basically a mini version of uh, Unity that runs in the browser. You got full PBR workflow. You can bring in your 3D assets, no problem. The performance is really nice. Um, you maximize it, and it's hard to tell that you are actually working in the browser. You can do real-time collaboration, so multiple people can work on the same project at the same time. Uh, zero compile times. Uh, you, you do your scripting in uh, JavaScript or the TypeScript language. Um, it's an interesting project. It also keeps getting cheaper. A lot of portions of it are open source. You can get an idea here of the features and functionality of the Play Canvas game engine. But today we're not really talking about Play Canvas. We are talking about PC UI, the tool used to make the toolbars, the drop downs, the grids, the um, thumbnails, the tree views, all of the stuff you are seeing here, all of these UI widgets, those are powered by PC UI, which is an open source project. So if you want to grab it, it is under the MIT code license and getting started is super simple. You're going to need to have a uh, node installed. At this point in time, almost everybody has node installed, it seems. And we are just going to fire up a command prompt here. This only works out of the temp directory for some strange reason. I'm kidding. I just install everything to temp. Uh, just do a git clone and then dump in that repository right there. And then we just basically change into that directory, PC UI. And then we're going to do an NPM install. NPM stands for Node Package Manager. It's sort of the uh, the glue that holds Node together. Uh, Node is a uh, JavaScript uh, runtime, I guess we could call it, and development framework. So we're going to let the uh, install do its thing. Uh, this is basically pulling in all of the uh, dependencies, etc., that are needed here. Uh, I'll pause it. This isn't the most exciting thing to watch. Actually, while that's running, we'll go ahead and head on back over to the GitHub page. We can look at some of the... Uh, the ideas here going on. Uh, so it's split into uh, um, ECMA script six components and there's some React components in there as well. You can work with React in here. Uh, I thought there was a bulleted feature. Oh, there is no bulleted point here. Well, wow, that's unfortunate. I'll go back over here. Is there uh uh, nope, but we can look at the components that are in there. So in terms of the UI components that you need to work with, you got things like array, uh, array of item input, Boolean inputs, buttons, uh, code. Uh, so if you want to have a code editor within, you can get that going on as well. Everything again is very well documented, which is nice. There's a container control, uh, context menus, dividers, info box, labels, uh, select input, slider, input, spider, uh, spiders, um, spinners, and so on. So all of the things that you need to do uh, in a UI are provided for you there. Uh, we also have uh, React support there, so you can um, import React elements into your file. We also have logic here for data binding, things like implementing the observer pattern. The observer looks at something and watches for changes, basically. And then we've also got two-way data binding. So if I go here, hello world, Bob it will automatically bind to the other example. And of course you can see code examples are showing how this works and I'm not, I can't scroll. So that, that's the extent of the example. So two-way binding is pretty simple to work with. The observer pattern is fairly simple to hook up as well. So you can see uh, how this all hooks up and basically it's the same basic result. So this is watching what the text field here is uh, using the observer pattern. And when something changes, it runs accordingly. So this way you can make, uh, I don't mean the word to use the word reactive UI, but it's what makes the most sense. So it, it responds to changes by observing uh, a number of different fields. And that's how you can basically make your code work with the UI. So here we are, uh, the it's done. Uh, interestingly enough, we have 44 vulnerabilities. Welcome to the world of Node. Uh, and now we're going to do npm run start.
storybook. And what this does is basically loads up a, um, a demonstration project. You can actually run the storybook online, by the way. It's available in the documentation. But we'll let this go ahead and run. So really, just to get up and running with this, make sure that you have Node installed, git clone the repository, uh, do an npm install, which will grab in all of the dependencies, vulnerabilities, and all. And then we can uh, run the demo by running uh, npm run storybook. And it's almost done, almost done. Here we go. And it's going to self-host its own web server. So here you can see the storybook. And this example, let me just zoom it in so you can see. It gives you a really good breakdown of the functionality in here. So you've got uh, array input of strings. You can see it in action right there. So let's say we did a Boolean input. You see it's normal checkbox. You can see the, the, the events that happen when it does it. And the cool thing here is you can actually drop into the documentation for that particular control as well. So let's say you needed to do uh, an info box. So you can see an info box in action. There is the, uh, the results of it. Or we did text label. Uh, Where's my, oh, I'm in docs still, there we go. So we can do a text label or we can do an info box or we can do a code sample. Uh, and you can see, again, anytime you can dump into the uh, docs available for it and head on down here, you're gonna notice there's a couple of examples. So you can see a to-do list, how to implement the to-do list, such as here, item one, uh, item two. And then you could say, okay, I've done this one and then we'll filter out. So we're gonna show active items and then it's gone. We've got the ability to delete things. So here you can see an example of, um, you know, code in action here. Um, it, it's it's a really well set up and documented UI library. Now, obviously, if you're not working in the browser or bundling for the browser, so of course you could host this. Um, a lot of um, applications look to be native and they're actually just hosted um, JavaScript applications or TypeScript applications. Uh, but if you are looking for a UI um, library, basically, that is uh, well, well battle tested. So this one uh, started life. Oops. Let me just go back over here. This one started life once again as the underlying um, code and logic behind the Play Canvas game engine, which, by the way, if you haven't checked out, I highly recommend. It's a great project. Uh, and if I was going to create a browser for a 3D application, it would probably be my go-to for something like that. And the underlying um, engine itself, not the editor, but the engine uh, is open source as well. Uh, but they basically, they split out all of the UI logic they did for making this game and made it its own library. Again, open sourced under the MIT license. And as I mentioned earlier on, uh, version two was literally just released. Uh, there's not a lot of details of it. They've changed some things out there. Um, they split out the observer um, pattern into its own thing. Um, and some of the binding stuff changed. So not a lot of real big changes there. But as you can see, over time, there have been several new releases. Um, it is regularly updated. Uh, again, this was released just two hours ago. So you can see uh, pretty, pretty steady development on this guy for sure. Uh, and yeah, that's that's it. Uh, that is PC UI, also known as Play Canvas UI. It is the open source MIT licensed uh, UI framework used in the Play Canvas game engine. And it's, uh, it's pretty nice to work with. Again, if you're in the browser or using JavaScript, TypeScript type environment. Uh, and let me just go in. I'll see if this was written in JavaScript or is this written in TypeScript. So let's go see some other components. Uh, JavaScript. All right, is it all in JavaScript? So far, okay. So uh, it looks like the code itself is entirely JavaScript. Let me just go see, check the bindings code. Yeah, all JavaScript. Um, and the code from my uh, experience is it's pretty clean, easy to read. It's actually documented, which is always nice. And this thing does have good documentation. And I always have to applaud open source libraries that have good documentation, especially for this kind of stuff. Because when you're, when you're trying to set up a UI framework, it's always frustrating when you have to guess you know, what the parameters are here or there or whatever. And this one makes that job pretty easy. So check it out if you're interested. Again, I started the video talking about this for some strange reason. I just have a thing for UI frameworks. Um, I, I always have, even if they've got nothing to do with game development. But this is a UI framework literally that was born from a game engine. So directly relevant to the game. And if only I could have found a uh, bullet point list, I would have hit all of my all of my favorites here. But do be sure to check out the documentation. It is very well documented. And as I mentioned earlier on, you can actually, you don't have to clone it or run it yourself. The storybook, everything that you saw that we ran locally, uh, the stuff that we did this way, uh, you can just run it in the browser if you wish. I will link to that in the linked article down below. All right, that's it. Uh, let me see, let me know what you think of PC UI, uh, or if you're using a different UI framework, uh, give me a recommendation. And that's it, talk to you all later, goodbye.